This is how Mr. Beast would promote his music on Spotify. Hey, it's John here at Hyped It, and in this video, I want to talk about Mr. Beast, the most successful YouTuber ever. As of recording this video, Mr. Beast has over 200 million subscribers on YouTube. His videos net hundreds of millions of streams. And on the back of this massive success and popularity, he's been able to score major brand partnership deals, and he's launched his own real life businesses, such as Beast Burger or Feastables, his line of chocolates. But this isn't where things started for Mr. Mr. Beast. He wasn't born with an audience of millions of fans. It is something that he built up to. And so in this video, I'm asking myself the question, how would Mr. Beast promote his music on Spotify? And this question popped into my head when I watched a Mr. Beast video where he talked about his success formula for YouTube and how he built up to the success that he has on YouTube and with his audience these days. Because if you think about it, there are some similarities between YouTube and Spotify. One of which is the power of the algorithm, all right? In order to make it big on YouTube, you need to get the algorithm short your content to a bigger and bigger audience. YouTube does this on the homepage. They do it with recommended videos and they do it with videos that play after videos you already watched. And if you get that level of support from YouTube and it happens millions and millions of times, then you can grow your audience to massive levels. And on Spotify, it's not that different. On Spotify, we have the algorithm support us with Discover Weekly, with Release Radar, with Spotify Radio. And the more and more Spotify helps us to put our music out there, the bigger our audiences grow. So what did Mr. Beast do to crack the YouTube algorithm that we can learn from on cracking the Spotify algorithm for our music? That's the question it comes really down to. And after having checked out a lot of behind the scenes content from Mr. Beast, where he talks about growth strategy, there's this one thing that really stood out to me in a big way way. And that's this. He said, every time you say the algorithm didn't like it, replace the word algorithm with the word audiences. It's not the algorithm that didn't like it. It's the audience that didn't like it. Look, this sounds super simple, but it's incredibly powerful and profound. Because what it means is that Mr. Beast doesn't create content for the algorithm. He creates content for his audience. And he knows that if he creates the best and most engaging content for his audience, then the algorithm does its thing all automatically. So it's not at all about cracking the algorithm. It's all about cracking the audience, so to speak, and making sure that he finds out what exactly is the best content formula for his audience to get him the maximum results. And in his case, that's how many people watch this content and watch it as long as possible. And what's so fascinating is that we do the same with Spotify, right? We talk about how do we crack Discover Weekly or how do we crack Release Radar? And maybe the better question that we should ask is how do we crack the right audience? How do we create the best possible match between quality music that we have and the perfect audience of diehard fans that we can match our music up with? And so here's what I think Mr. Beast would do in order to blow up his music on Spotify. First, he would hyper study his audience, right? He would test, test, test. If he ran Facebook and Instagram ads for his music, like I do and many of us do, he wouldn't just launch a campaign to a specific set of audiences and hope for the best. No, he would probably run 10, 20, 30 campaigns for the same song using separate audience, a separate sound like artist for every one of these campaigns to test, test, test and see which one is the ultimate winner, the audience that creates the best match between his song and the music fans out there. And once he figured this out, he would take that audience and carry it forward and carry it forward because he has this mentality that is like, you have to do something a hundred times to get really good at it. And if you do this thing a hundred times and every time you get a little bit better, you're gonna be really freaking good at the end of having it done a hundred times. So he would test, test, test audiences. Next thing, he would make new music all the time. Think about it. If you only release three, four, five tracks a year, that only gives you three, four, five opportunities to promote your music and see what really works and which audience really sticks. Now compare this to an artist who's able to put out music every week, or every two weeks, or maybe every month. 
right? All of a sudden there you have either over 50 opportunities, maybe 25 plus opportunities, or maybe 12 opportunities. So a lot more opportunities to test what works and which audiences really perform well. And it also gives you an opportunity to figure out what kind of sound and what kind of song performs the best. So I'm pretty sure Mr. Beast would adopt the one song a week release schedule and every time he would try to make the song a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, and then reap the rewards from it. Number three, Mr. Beast would surround himself with people who geek out on this stuff as much as he does. And if you listen about his origin story, it's quite fascinating. He got together with a group of friends and every day for hours they talked about what they saw on YouTube work well, what thumbnails work best, what video formats work best. And because they were this tight-knit group of quote-unquote geeks that got together and every one of them was creating their own videos and everybody was sharing what they saw and what worked and what didn't work with everybody else, they kind of super accelerated the learning curve. Everybody got better a lot faster because they shared everything they learned individually into the group. And this is why Mr. Beast would certainly surround himself with other music artists that are also in the game promoting their music. Now, this is easy for you watching this video because you can just click below, join the Facebook group that we have for Hyped It and automatically gonna be connected with other music artists who are in the game just as you are. And now number four, and last but not least, this is really important, Mr. Beast would fail. But instead of saying, ah, this doesn't work, no, he would say, I failed, and he would learn from it, and he would do better next time. And this is such an important one, because I meet so many music artists who try to promote their music a certain way, it doesn't work, and then their reaction is, ah, oh, man, this doesn't work for my music, and they give up, and then they see this other thing. So they say, okay, let me promote my music this way, and they try it again, they dabble in it, and maybe it doesn't succeed. So again, they say, ah, this doesn't work for my music, but there's this other thing, I can try this. But because they're only dipping their toes and dabbling in each of them, not really investing the time and the effort in getting really good in one thing, they never see the result that they set out to get. And so Mr. Beast has been at this YouTube game for many years, and I think he would bring the same attitude to Spotify, adopt a promotion method that he knows works, that he has seen others have success with, and then be laser focused, go at it. And then if he failed, he would learn from it and get better and better every time. And so there you have it. I think Mr. Beast would hyper study his audience and his audience targeting if running Facebook and Instagram ads. He would put out new music all the time. He would surround himself with geeks that love music promotion just as much in order to share what works and what doesn't and always do better as a team. And if he failed, he wouldn't give up and say, no, this doesn't work for my music. No, he would get back up. He would learn from it and do better next time. It's that mentality that has made him the most successful YouTuber of all times. And I think that mentality is something that can help us get a lot better at promoting our music on Spotify. So I hope you liked my little rant here on Mr. Beast. I find this stuff incredibly fascinating. And if you do too, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and the bell icon below so you can get more videos like this from me on YouTube on how to reach and get more fans, listeners, and streams for your music. And if Mr. Beast could pick one system to get more listeners and streams and fans on Spotify when he starts out his music career, then who knows? Maybe it's this one right here. <laughs> Wanna get your music heard on Spotify with AI? I just launched a brand new video training program called the Spotify Growth Switch, where I show you how to start growing real listeners, real fans, and real streams on Spotify in less than 10 minutes using software and AI. I've used the Spotify growth switch system to now grow my music to over 7 million streams and tens of thousands of monthly listeners on Spotify. This works for any music genre. It gets you real fans and listeners super fast and it's extremely easy to set up, literally just like flipping a spotlight switch for your music. Despite using AI, you don't need to know nothing about tech stuff in order to be successful with this. I've had the tremendous privilege of helping multiple tens of thousands of music artists grow their music on Spotify, many of which have grown to much larger numbers, lots more listeners, lots more streams than I have using the systems that I've taught. Makes me so proud of their success. And so if you wanna get more real listeners, real fans and real streams for your music fast using state of the art software and AI, then click the link below this video and check out the Spotify growth switch. I can't wait to help you grow your music on Spotify and I look forward to seeing you on the inside.